Good afternoon, and I'm so honored to be here and incredibly uh, pleased to see a lot of my colleagues as well as our magnificent students at FIU uh, here in the audience. Uh, my career path has been sort of different. Uh, I wanted to spend most of my time talking about my position uh, as Secretary of Health and Surgeon General for the state of Florida, but wanted just to say a couple of words beforehand. Uh, when, once I finished my training, uh, at a certain point in my life, uh, my husband was in academic medicine, and as you all know, in order to progress in academic medicine, a lot of times uh, you need to be moving from position to position. So it was a time in my life where we physically moved out of Miami, we moved actually up to Washington, D.C., and it sort of coincided with the birth of uh, very, uh, close together of all my children, as well as uh, an Ill, my mother became quite ill, both mentally and physically, and she couldn't take care of her own mother, my grandmother. So I ended up with a house of children, as well as a mother and a grandmother that uh, were at home and that I was responsible for. And at that point, having been very, very concentrated on, in my career and in my education, I decided for my own self and for my own uh, time in my life that I needed to dedicate time and prioritize what I needed to do at home. It was interesting because my own mother was a pathologist and she never stopped working. She worked full time all her life. She had come from Cuba and for her, her career and being able to provide for her family were extremely, extremely important. And in fact, she was not very, uh, I think, supportive of my decision. Uh, to stop working outside and, and spend time at home uh, because, again, her particular situation. However, I did decide to do that, and looking back in my life, I think it was probably the most joyful and the most fulfilling time in my life. Um, that's not to say, again, my mother was a full-time uh, wonderful professional, and I don't think I could ever, ever have asked to have a mother that was more committed and more... Uh, I mean, there was no question that her priorities were her family, and uh, if I could, I think at the end of my life, think that I'm one half as good as what she was as a mother, I think I'll have been an incredible success. So it, I say this because we all have to make certain decisions in our life depending upon what uh, cards were dealt. And what I do want to say, especially to the young women, don't make any, don't let anyone make you feel. Uh, less than or judged. Uh, we were just talking, I think, uh, just before with my other uh, esteemed panelists that a lot of times women are judged because they are working and that they haven't dedicated time to their family. Well, I can tell you the same way that uh, you're judged. You can't win, it seems. I remember uh, being at home, uh, being told, you know, what a waste, you know, and what a waste of, of, your, of your education and of your training. And finally, when I did go back to work, being told, oh, finally, you're going to be able to do something with your life, you know. And so, again, you do what you need to do in your life. You be uh, self-assured inside that, uh, look, look truly inside of what you really need to do and what truly um, satisfies you and fulfills you. And, again, there's no perfect answer. There's many, many uh trade-offs that we have to make. I remember my mother telling me, you know, well, what happens if your husband passes away or leaves you or whatever? What's going to become of you? You know, you'll, you'll not have been in a wor the workforce. And in fact, it was, she was very um, uh, pressing in her, in, her, in her prediction because I did, I did have to go back to work uh, at the age of 50, go back to school and retrain in, in large part because that did happen to me, and certainly I was not in the financial situation to provide for my family as I would have been if I had never stopped working. So again, there are trade-offs, but in my particular situation, that's what I needed to do, I felt I needed to do. I think the greatest, uh, I think, uh, uh, compliment that I ever received from my husband was, you went from being an AOA do doctor to an AOA mother. So that, that would have been, maybe that could be on my, on my tombstone or something. But anyways, that truly was, uh, was very gratifying to me. But I did want to talk a little bit about my experience as the first Surgeon General in the state of Florida, the first woman uh, Secretary of Health. At the time that I uh, 
became, was appointed, it was in 2007. Uh, the average tenure in my position is 13 months. I lasted four years, and I'm saying I have the scars to show for it because it's an incredibly tough environment, and I'll give you some examples about that. Uh, there has never been a Surgeon General and Secretary of Health that combines both positions in anywhere in the states, in any state. There have been Surgeon Generals in Michigan and in Kansas, but they are not the administrative heads also of Departments of Health. Here in the state of Florida, and in fact, the Department of Health in the state of Florida is the largest uh, Department of Health in the whole country because we're a very centralized system. Uh, we are, have 67 counties and we are actually the providers of, uh, of clinical services. We're the largest clinical service enterprise for the whole state. And a lot of people don't realize that. We are in every state, in every county, as far as our county health departments. Uh, the community health centers are not represented in every single county. Uh, we provide, as I said, primary care services in many of them, especially in our rural areas and as well as dental services and mental health services as well. Since I left in 2011, there's been a big push to privatize a lot of the services that the, that the health department provides. And what has happened is that uh, a lot of folks that truly depended upon uh, the, the public health services are just not receiving it. And I'm, I'm sad to say that even our own medical profession, I'm a proud member of the Florida Medical Association, was not that supportive of the primary care services that the health department was providing. They wanted to push the idea of increasing reimbursements for Medicaid patients and kept telling the state, if you only gave us more money, we would take care of these poor people. Well, not only has there not been more money for the, uh, for the Medicaid providers, but these poor people now have frequently nowhere to go other than our very expensive uh, emergency rooms. What I wanted to share with you also, I had about 16,000 uh, uh, staff members throughout the whole state of Florida, uh, and we ran all children's medical services, our emergency um, uh, response activities for the state during my tenure. We had H1N1, we had the uh, Gulf oil spill, we had numerous hurricanes, we had the anthrax scare, we had the Haitian earthquake where we received a lot of patients from uh, Haiti as well. And so it, we, I, I used to say, instead of uh, uh, Toys R Us, we're em emergencies are, are us here in Florida. I mean, you name it, and we, we've had to deal with it. So we're very proficient in that sense because of our experience. Uh, but it was very tough, and I had never been in a political environment. And for those of you that have never been in that environment, I think you would be um, surprised at how difficult it is and how frequently decisions, uh, life and death decisions in the case of the health department were made purely based on special interests and uh, decisions that had nothing to do with what was ultimately the greater good for, for our population. I stayed in that position because I really became, I really fell in love with the constituencies that we were serving. These were individuals that certainly frequently did not vote that did not have lobbyists and certainly didn't give money to campaigns. So in the, uh, in the line outside the lobbyist offices, we were certainly the last man standing. And I really felt that it was important to be a voice. And as I was mentioning also, I don't know how many times I carried around a resignation letter because the environment was so <laughs> tough at times uh, that I thought, you know, at any moment I'm gonna pull this out. But I'll give you an example. I remember there was a particular lobbyist who had given a lot of money to uh, one of the top people in the administration, and he was involved in a very large class action suit against the pharmaceutical companies uh, over the vaccines for children. Uh, he had three children, two of which were autistic, and he was able to convince our governor that we not only had to change the scheduling of vaccines, we had to uh, add uh, philosophical exemptions to the reasons why we shouldn't vaccinate and even not require, it, require vaccines for entry to schools. And I was just horrified, you know, and I, I just couldn't believe that this decision was based on, at the end of the day, monies that was uh, given to campaigns and without any basis in real science. And I remember being told one day, you cannot go out there and advocate something different because this is like a football team. 
and the governor is the coach, you're the quarterback, you cannot run out, run out there and run a different play. So either you run the play that you've been given or you leave. So at that point, what do you do? You know, you think, gosh, you know, you're, you're right, you know, I can't, uh, I, I serve at the pleasure of, but at the same time, if I leave, who's gonna be in my position that will run the ball without questioning, without pushing, uh, based on real science and what is the right thing to do? So what do you do? You, at, you find advocates that are behind the scenes that can say what you can't say and that you can give information to so that they can make your own case. So it's a very, very tough environment. And what I did learn now that we're in a political season is that there's no difference between the political parties. At the end of the day, they are all run by special interests and money is what really dictates policy. And we really need folks to speak up and to realize that there are a lot of folks out there that depend on our voices and that don't have the money for, le for lobbyists or, or to give to campaigns. I've always been uh, a real believer in uh, community service. I've been in our volunteering as a physician and as now I'm the head of the board of our, the biggest um, homeless center here in Miami, Camillus, and I'm er eager to hear tomorrow about uh, human trafficking and labor trafficking because that's something that we're working with our state attorney to uh, build up as well. So that has been my, I think I, I've been incredibly fortunate coming from family of uh, Cuban refugees, I was the first American born in the family, uh, to take advantage of the opportunities that this country, the most magnificent country in the world I think, of the educational opportunities that I've had. I have my children, I've said, you know, I, we won't talk about a fancy car, we won't talk about anything, but if for education purposes, I'm there for you. And in fact, I paid, I just finished this past year paying my 15th year of tuition to Harvard. <laughs> and so I have no savings left, I have nothing, but I was able to do what I wanted to do for my kids, is give them the best uh, head start possible. And I've always told them also, this is, is like a football team, and I'm the quarterback and you're the running back. I will get you the ball, but you know where the goal post is and now you have to run it. So I set you up in the best way I, I knew how. Now you need to do what you need to do. So anyways, what I do want to share, especially with the young women, do what your heart says. Never be feel judged by anyone because you will. You'll be judged no matter what you do. Uh, by folks, but do what is true to yourself and what will help you, you know, put your head down at night and feel very fulfilled. And everything else will work out. I really think if you work hard and if you are respect others, you will feel respect, the, that, that same respect back, and uh, you'll have a very fulfilling life. So thank you so much.